somebody shout hallelujah that's our that hallelujah is is not is not sufficient i said someone shout hallelujah and we give you praise oh great king of kings we magnify your name we exalt you tonight we ask that you take all the glory for the things that you would do be at liberty to fulfill your counsel and to accomplish your will in our midst to the glory of your name in Jesus mighty name now ushers you can take that individual to a location where the person can ventilate effectively uh, we want to begin to gain ascendancy through the instrumentality of the word of God so he's already there so let's give him accommodation to exercise himself and achieve adequate ventilation in Jesus name please you may be seated you're welcome for those of you outside that seem not to have any seating oh my god if you're outside say hallelujah for those that seem not to have any sitting we are sorry about that uh, I believe that that sacrifice is a light thing to pay for the deluge of the glory of God that will be descending on this ground tonight so please make someone welcome to your left and to your right we are tell the person we are in business with Jesus All right, turn your Bible to the book of uh, Daniel. Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter number 11, verse number 32. We will not be talking for too long tonight. Because we are trusting God to dispense upon us such needed equipment that will certify us law enforcement agents in the kingdom of God. So Daniel chapter 11 verse 32 says, And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt with flat by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits. It means that there are entities, there are personalities that will want to do wickedly against the covenant. A covenant is a partnership and this partnership is fully convinced of the inadequacies that we sustain and is on the strength of these inadequacies that we go we cut covenant if I'm caught in covenant with you, it means that there is a line of insufficiency that is captured in the expression of my life for which I need support. I need assistance. I need reinforcement. So on the strength of the acknowledgement of my limitation, I come into covenant with a personality that can make up for my weakness the covenant that I caught with this personality confers upon me responsibilities to take care of aspects of the business of the individual into which I am in covenant so that it is a symbiotic relationship I benefit 
because the area of my weakness is swallowed by the transaction captured in the covenant. But the Bible says that there are such that we do wickedly against the covenant. The covenant guarantees several things and the devil is aware of the fact that you are in covenant with God and he wants to put you in a situation where he will walk against the profits and the possibilities that are bound toward you on the account of the covenant that you have entered. If I'm crippled, for instance, and I enter into covenant with someone that is not just able but has the capacity to carry me on his back, and maybe the reason why the person is interested in staying in covenant with me is because I have a nemos intellectual capacity with which I used to make so much profit, such profit that the person can get benefit. So the person takes advantage of my inability and my mental prowess provides benefit that the person can enjoy. The devil is aware of the fact that you are in covenant with God and you have access to the resources of God. You have access to the reinforcement of God if you know how to take advantage of such possibilities. And what he wants to do is to orchestrate a scenario where he walks against your capacity to achieve full realization of the import of the covenant that you have with God. Are you with me? Now, you see, the devil should not be the only person planning. You should also have a plan if Satan is planning. And in this scripture, the Bible reveals to us a plan that we need to sustain if we are going to outsmart the devil on his intention to ensure that we do not achieve maximum capacity utilization for our partnership with God. If we are going to undo the intention of the enemy, to malign our possibilities even though we are in partnership with God, then there is a prescription that this scripture makes available to us. It says, the people that do know what? Now, I'd like you to take full cognizance of the fact that he didn't say the people that do know Jehovah. He said the people that do know their God. It means that if someone knows Ahmadiyya very well, that person will be strong and he will do exploit. It means if someone knows Ogugu very well, the person will be strong and he will do what? For the people that do know their God. It means that what will determine what is obtainable is the extent to which you know the person that you are in covenant relationship with. So my question for you tonight is, how much of God do you know? And if we are going to evaluate the extent to which you know God, there are parameters, there are two parameters given to us in this scripture by which we can evaluate your knowledge of God. The first parameter is that there should be an obvious manifestation of capacity that is superhuman, that attends to your life. For the people that do know their God, they shall be what? You may not know how, how strong a man is, how strong a woman is, until you decide to engage in combat with them. When you engage in combat, when you engage in an assault with them, then there are hidden and latent powers that you are not aware of is brought to the fore. The people that don't know their God 
they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. So if there is no evidence of superhuman strength in your life, that means someone that knows the devil tries to come bring injury into your life and with all the attempts the person made, it was impossible for the person to achieve his intention because you have, you have access to a reserve of strength uh, that became your covering and your protection. If that's not your story, you don't know God. And if you do not have the ability to be able to wield the utensils that are obtainable in the realm of God to effect changes in the natural, is also proof of the fact that you do not know God. And, and I say this with all politeness because it is the position of the scriptures. The game of life is the game of territory. And as we begin in our study this evening, you are going to see how destiny is plotted out, how ordinations are fulfilled, and how influence is brought to bear upon the face of the earth. Come with me quickly. Let's explore the Bible. We'll begin our journey from the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. The people that do know their God. There is an investment that God is going to make on your life tonight so that you can represent Him in your own facet of human endeavor. And exalt his glory in the midst of darkness. In Acts chapter 5, I'd like to take a scripture quickly. All right, we'll read from verse 9 to 13. Acts chapter, sorry, sorry, sorry. Acts chapter 8. Verse 9 to 13, sorry. How many of you have, have played this game we call chairs before? Chairs. You played it before? Okay, there are very few. What, what of draft? Do you know draft? The game of draft is a game of territory. The logic behind your move is the best move that will secure more territory for you. Satan is interested in territory. God is interested in territory. You know, once upon a time, I had the privilege to preach in a state wedding. You know, that's a wedding that brings... Uh, government functionaries together because of the people involved um, in the ceremony. So I prayed and asked the Lord to give me a message in order for me to be his mouthpiece during the course of the event. And God took me to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 2 and Genesis chapter 3. And we saw how beautifully God had orchestrated the garden and he had made all the resources that man would need available before he introduced him into the ecosystem. And then he was basking in the euphoria of his environment because his environment made for aesthetics, his environment made for nutrition, his environment made for life. There was a tree of life there which was supposed to introduce him into the economy of the divine life, the economy of the Zoe. Uh, there were fruits and, uh, in that garden where, that were ordained for nutrition. And there were others that were good to the eyes. So aesthetics, nutrition, and life was covered by the resources that were made available in the garden. It was in that environment of harmony that God saw that there was a conflict because the measuring unit, the unit of measurement 
of compliance in his creative endeavor was a certain unit called good. Huh? Because God was both the creator and an observer. And when he finishes to create, he will step back as an observer and look at it. And if it doesn't amount to good, which is a unit of compliance that is in God, God will not stop creating until he arrives at what? Oh, you are not following me. Oh, my God. You know, in this, my lecture this evening, um, if, if my diary has not been open yet, eh, since I came to Canada, when I notice that you are not following, we will, the, the syllabus will reduce it. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's when next I come that I'll be able to open the, the diary. All right, so God comes and he begins to create, create for a certain season. Then he steps back to see the things that he has done. There's supposed to be harmony. There's supposed to be balance. There is supposed to be a cyclical capacity to continue and propagate. It is supposed to be self-sustaining, self-rejuvenating, self-propagating. And God steps back and looks at the things that he has done if it approximates to that unit called what? Good. So when you study, you are going to find about five goods. Good. 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 Then cumulatively, lastly, you are going to find very good. It means that creation was balanced, it was compliant, it was sustainable, it was self-sufficient, it was self-supporting. Are you there? That means after that work of creation, God doesn't need to come and support it anymore. It can keep on going on by itself without any need for external support. Are you there? But you see, when the issue of man came and introduced man into that ecosystem, for the first time, God saw a situation that did not approximate onto that unit of measurement that he uses as a means of compliance in his creative endeavor. And so he said, it is not good that what? That man will be alone. So you see, that arrangement did not approximate to that unit. Are you there? That was where he decided to continue creating in order for him to make and help meet for him. So you will, you will imagine the kind of ecstasy that was in that environment when man met his wife. He had emotional fulfillment. They had nutritional possibility. The ecosystem was adequate to begin uh, 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 to make children. Their potentials will be actualized in terms of their capacity to reproduce. And that was a wonderful ecosystem. But unfortunately for them, they didn't know that Satan was going to come into the territory. The thing about life is that your joy is going to be short-lived the moment <laughs> Satan comes to check your territory. And if it happens to be that you are not strong because the measure of strength is not on a good day. The measure of strength is in the day of adversity. For the Bible reveals that if you fall in the day of adversity, then your strength is small. And unfortunately for these individuals, Satan came into their realm, came into your ecosystem, and they did not have the strength to wade him off. The story of humankind took a detour because Satan met people that did not have the capacity to maintain their estate and to sustain the integrity of their territory. So that is the chairs I'm talking about. That's the draft. Satan is playing, trying to take territory from you. You are also playing, trying to Receive territory that Satan had taken before. In the book of Acts of the Apostle, chapter 8, verse 9, the Bible says, But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. 
to whom all to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest saying this man is the great power of God hallelujah and to him they had regard because of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries now I'd like you to see four factors maybe three factors concerning this individual the guy was domiciled in the city of Samaria can you go back to nine he was domiciled in the city of Samaria he was a sorcerer you know the Bible says that the people that do know their God they shall be what strong he didn't say the people that do know Jehovah he said the people that know their God so Simon knew his God Simon's God was the God of sorcery and by the wisdom of sorcery Simon was able to bewitch an entire city a family can be bewitched a church community can be bewitched a city can be bewitched a nation can be bewitched listen to me and listen carefully I was in the oil industry in Nigeria for 16 years the meaning of that is this we were the ones generating the statistics that were references to our wealth and I can tell you reliably that Nigeria has never been as prosperous as we have been in the last 16 years in the history oh, oh you might say there's poverty around your corner but I'm saying I know the figures and if statistics means anything we prospered in an overwhelming manner but whenever you see prosperity that in a, in a locality but it doesn't trickle down to the individual members on the street bewitchment and sorcery has been introduced into the equation now I'm telling you today that life is not fair if you are waiting for by and by for the lines to fall before you in prison places you will wait for a long long time because the people that do know their god they shall be strong mm. yeah so we generate statistics that are point us to our economic viability given the fact that at the time 89 percent of our gross domestic product was was tied to the activities that we did in the oil sector i have statistics i have figures i have all kinds of stuff in my brain while we labored in that war front but you see these guys in this community they were bewitched by a sorcerer the guy was prolific in the ways of sorcery and he used his knowledge his spiritual insight to bewitch an entire city Uh, the average believer that is on this field tonight only has the ability to speak in tongues still speaks in tongues but the witches that are in their extended family are still exercising government and control over the destinies of the children and the grandchildren that are born to that family it doesn't matter your name it doesn't matter your gender the moment you are a member of that family you come under the influence that has been established in that domain which is drawn from the wisdom of a certain sorcerer that sits over the entire enclave so the bible says that this guy whose name was simon he gave out that himself was one was some great one that was what he advertised about himself that he was a carrier of greatness that he was a carrier of capacity that he was someone to be reckoned with he was an authority to be recognized that was the um identity about himself that he sold out are you there with me now but the next verse says that he even though he advertised himself to be some great one the people in the city 
called him a name the great power of God hallelujah it was obvious that it was sorcery he was using because in this next scripture we see a situation of impersonation there he was a sorcerer he was he was into witchcraft he was into manipulation he was into dominion he was into control of the destinies of men and of the fortunes of the territory meanwhile in the eyes of the people that were low in discernment they called him the great power of god that means he had all the compliments of a mighty preacher of the gospel in that territory that's a situation that god would want to change quickly but he could not change it quickly because there was no strong man from the side of the kingdom of god that could be brought on the chess board on the draft board that we contend with his authority in the territory so as long as we do not have people from the body of christ that can contend with them that are practitioners of witchcraft men that are practitioners of astrology we will live in the city of Kano under the control that bedevils the territory and many of you in this place can tell us the story of how you lost your financial fortunes that there was a time that you were gliding financially and things were opening up you were about to break forth and just before you broke forth some challenges came that crippled you 12 years ago and since that time you have not been able to recover ah, that's the story of what happens when people operate in a place that is locked by the powers of astrology if you are still with me say amen, amen. some people are already sad so this guy held the ground this guy was guilty of impersonation he was called the great power of god even though he was using sorcery god wanted to checkmate him god wanted to intercept him god wanted to expose him but there was no man on ground that he could use to undo this nature of blasphemy that was going on until philip the evangelist began to gain stature in the spirit as philip was growing and giving himself to prayer giving himself to fasting learning how to obey god learning how to be faithful to god his spiritual rank was increasing his capacity in the spirit was increasing was taking advantage of the presence of god and it came to pass during the persecution that he found himself in the city of Samaria. Now, I don't think Philip went to Samaria by choice. He stumbled upon the, the location. And because he was an evangelist, he began to do what he was trained to do, to preach the gospel. And before he knew it, he had head on collision with the entity that had already exerted itself in the territory. You see, please help me preach to your neighbor. Oh, you don't want to preach the way I'm seeing you. The way I'm seeing you. All right, because you are not interested, we will. Uh, this syllabus, we will cut it. Yes, yeah. You are no. You are not here. You are not here. You are still in Sabongeri, thinking about your losses in the last business that you had, and you are still pitying yourself. Meanwhile, God has brought you to the stage where He wants to give you the capacity to undo the witchcraft that was responsible for the tragedy that you are still mourning. If you are still here, say Amen. Yeah. In the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, beginning from verse 5, you will see that God decided to push a functionary into that territory. Before Philip came into the territory, the devil had already covered the ground. Satan's man was already on top. Satan's man had made a name. Satan's man had earned a reputation because of his capacity to do exploits. You know, I told you, that the Bible says that the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do expo. He, called, he said it, they are God. They are God. Many of us have not journeyed into Jehovah enough to know him. 
such that we are strong by Jehovah and we can do exploits by Jehovah. And if you have not arrived at that point, I'd like to announce to you that all the while you have been a victim of the devil. Oh, before you were born, Satan had already established an infrastructure in your family. And he had enthroned one of his own that he had educated in witchcraft so that nobody will rise. Nobody will be able to go to the university. And then you now pass Wayek. You pass Jam. And you thought that if you pass Wayek and pass Jam, that's the only prerequisite that you need to enter into the university. Then you enter. You, when it's time to write uh, exams, you will go blank. Uh, everybody's quiet. Is there somebody in the congregation tonight? You notice that whenever you want to write exams, you go blank. If you are like that, stand up. Inside and outside. Okay, so we have two brethren. Oh, there are more than two, you see. See, these are good Christians. They are pious, sanctimonious, and sacramental Christians. But there is a pattern they cannot explain. It's a game of power. Power that results from spiritual knowledge. But tonight... We are going to do a battle tonight here. Yeah. <laughs> Sit down, don't worry, I will call you when the time comes. But I need to open up these things so that we can be ready to take the position that will be saying to Satan that you have prospered all these years, but from today we want to bring you down. In my family, when someone gets to the age of 21, a terrible thing happens to him. It's either you become a victim of a psychiatric situation or you are afflicted with a disease that even the best doctors cannot diagnose. I'm not just talking about Nigerian doctors. I'm talking about samples being taken to places in the United Kingdom for screening and their laser equipments were not able to see the seedlings that were planted by demons. And when I became 21 years old, I was already on campus and I was heading to the prayer room. I was 10 minutes late and it came to pass as I was heading there, I found out that meanwhile our prayer was 12 midnight to 1 a.m. That's our prayer time, okay? Are you with me now? Do you know a typical campus, there is no time of the day you walk on the walkways that you'll be walking alone. A typical campus. But unfortunately for me, that day when I was walking on the walkway, I was alone. And a strange bird appeared. I didn't say the, the bird flew. I said it did what? It appeared. And it made attempt to stand on my head. That was when I realized how some of my brothers were afflicted. Are you there? Yes, if you don't know my family, we are some of the most intelligent people among my tribe. And I say this because I have facts. Are you there? And mostly when this attack comes, so that bird wanted to stand on my head and I, 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 I now went in the flesh. I thought that because it came close. I thought that if, if, I, if I hit it like this, it will fall down. <laughs> Though we walk in the flesh, <laughs> we do not walk <laughs> after the flesh. So when I attempted to hit the thing, the bed did not fly. The bed moved. It didn't, it didn't do like this. It just moved. It just, just enough for my hand to pass. I know you will not believe it. I know you think I'm, I'm, I'm trying to relate a, a, one of the Nigerian Nollywood movies to you. <laughs> the thing just moved. And then began to come again. And then the Holy Spirit whispered to me that if you, if you accommodate fear tonight, you will die. So I closed my eyes because the thing was trying to change to something. 
I closed my eyes and I spoke in tongues in capital letters. <laughs> After 15 minutes of exercising my spirit, I opened my eyes and I saw that the thing fell and one of his wings was broken. I said, ah, the thing is working. Oh. Oh. After that little squabble, three days later, the last among my relatives, the oldest that refused to die, he defied death. Oh, Cheney. <laughs> I don't want to go for May the Lord give you understanding. Oh, Cheney was the most peaceful man on earth. If, yes, if there is a fight, Ocheni, and he sees it, ah, he will run away. I say, ah, that his heart cannot take quarry, cannot take. He was a man of peace. He earned the reputation of the most gentle man among our district people. Ocheni was the warlock that was flying in a bed and bringing madness to every compound. Every compound. Every, do you realize that? Oh, you are not following. You are not following. Ocheni. Ocheni came out after that and he came to his door. He, sat, he stood by his door. Everybody that greeted him, he did not answer. And after about 20 minutes, he fell face down. That's how he died. It's after that death that peace came into my family. I'm not saying we kill people. I'm just saying sometimes strong men are victims of, of combat. And tonight... Tonight is one of those nights of combat. <laughs> I come in the fullness of the blessing of my calling tonight. Ocheni. There were many people visiting the psychiatric hospital because of the power, the strength, the exploits of Ocheni. Ocheni can bend the destinies of people, promising people that are rising stars for the next generation. The moment it takes interest in you, a mishap that will preoccupy you for life becomes your portion. Should I tell you something? It's not enough for you to be gifted. You need to pass from the realm of gift to the realm of strength. Because the Bible says that the people that do know can come. shall be strong so when this guy had gained ground in the territory what happened was that God now decided to play chess, to play draft he took Philip from Jerusalem and he posted him to Samaria and Philip began to do evangelism he began to minister he started winning people from this guy casting out the, dev the devils that he used to plague them. Are you there? Every time an evangelist was mentioned in scripture. You will not see even in one occasion. That Jesus sent people to preach for him. And he did not give them the ability to cast out devils. If you see an evangelist. That cannot cast out devils. If you see a minister. That is that pampers devils. <laughs> You see a prophet that can give you a word of knowledge, give you a word of wisdom, but he cannot cast out devils. I can tell you very, very, very uniquely from the patterns in scripture that he was not sent from God. Everyone that Jesus sent, he gave the authority and the capacity to cast out devils. The challenge of humankind is traceable to the activities of these demon spirits. And an enchanter is a man that has capacity to communicate with devils. 
you will never rise in the rank of sorcery until you become endowed with capacity and intelligence to give commandments to demons that was what made this man end the name the great power of god verse 5 of acts chapter 8 then philip went down to the city of samaria and preached christ unto them and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which philip spake hearing and seeing the miracles which he did so go back to six go back to six you will see that in philip's ministry there was um the audio part they were hearing and in philip's ministry there was the video part they were seeing so philip gave them what to hear he also gave them what what to see now this kind of ministry that philip had was noisy it's not you can't do you can't you can't accommodate Philip in a place where you prioritize order much more than, than, than liberation. Because the moment Philip enters into the terrain, you will lose the order in the service. I know you like orderly services where we'll come and, and, and sing a hymn. We'll start. In fact, the preacher cannot even move from here. We'll just say, There shall be This is the promise of you are not singing because you are denying you are denying the situation huh? there shall be seasons refresh but if you introduce philip into that place that order you are trying to maintain that women should sit this side young men should sit here and men old men here yeah. some I, I think some people are beginning to understand what i'm talking about and the very old men is at the back they have back seat if you are not part of them you can't sit at the back there. no even if you are late and you come there the, the way they will look at you you will know that <laughs> but when you bring philip into that equation the place will begin to erupt and people will hear things and they will what they will sit in so when Philip came, the demons that Simon the sorcerer put on the people, he had capacity and wisdom to remove it. Simon can send the demons. Philip can do what? He can remove the demons. Today we'll be removing demons. I say we'll be removing demons. I say we'll be removing the demons in your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Went to preach in Kenya. When I came to the pulpit, there was a witch in the congregation, and that's not a problem. Witches can be in the congregation, all right? It's not a problem. But the thing about this particular case was that the witch now flashed me, <laughs> sent me a flash. Some of us began to preach in the villages as missionaries. We casted devils without microphones, did great miracles without cameras, viewing us. It's when I came to the city center and I found out that just one devil that was casted became news. That was, that's what we do for a living. <laughs> we do it for a living. The, the greatest miracles that have happened to my ministry are not on tape. We are from the village. It took me two years to know how to hold this thing you call the microphone because after some time we forget we're casting out devils without there was no the way we'll do our voice eh? even a thousand people can hear this <laughs> hallelujah i say hallelujah Amen. my brother came to visit me this morning and i was telling him that i've seen someone's leg grow out before and I know you not believe that. The leg eh, grew out. In a meeting like this, it happened in Lagos. The leg grew out. They had already gone to, they were visiting um, the hospital. 
the teaching hospital in Ibadan. And they had already made a shoe. You know that shoe? That the leg that is good will have small soul. And the leg that is bad will have a big soul. They had already made the shoe. They paid for it. And they were going to get the shoe on Monday. And that day was a Saturday. And we were in the meeting like this. And then I began to minister. And the, the girl's leg, she noticed, it, noticed that the thing was just growing out. At the end of the growth, the two legs became the same length. Meanwhile, that leg became like that because of an accident that they fixed. It grew out. Even the place where the accident took place, that there was a fracture. We couldn't find it. I can tell you reliably that 30% of the people that die have no business with death. We can actually bring them back from the dead. And if you have ever casted out a devil, because in casting out devils is to tell demons to go, in raising the dead is to tell a spirit to come back. If you have ever casted out a devil, you can raise the dead. It's just that you don't know. Thirty percent of the people we bury have no business in the grave. But the point is that we don't have strong men that can do exploits for God. Are you with me? So the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which with he did. Verse 7. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame were healed. Verse 8. And there was great joy in that city. Do you know that you are the key to the joy of many lives? Do you know so? You are key, the key to the joy of many families. You are the key to the joy of many homes. And there was great joy in that city. You know what else happened? Simon, the great power of God, now discovered that the dimension of power that Philip was operating was superior to his own and he decided to bow down to the authority of Philip. Do you know how many witches are supposed to bow down by now? If God's house have strong men that can rise up to challenge the illegality of the bondages that have been brought upon people, do you know how many cities, how many nations will rejoice? So like I said, I was in Kenya and I stood behind the pulpit and the witch struck me with her spiritual power and I felt it on my stomach. The first one, I just kept quiet. I endured the pain and when the pain passed, I continued my teaching. And somewhere along the line, I began to speak about the power of God that was superior to the power of darkness. The witch got angry again. He sent a missile. That second one, I say I will not forgive it. And I came down from the pulpit and I asked the Holy Spirit to help me and I began to look for the witch in the congregation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We do that sometimes if we need to. And I spotted the woman in the congregation. One, two, three, the power of God took her up and she began to confess right there in Kenya. So the ones that are here have not yet attacked me yet. So the moment, even if it's one attack, I will come down and go and look for them. Remember that the people that do know their God, they shall be what? And they shall do exploit. So when God saw that Simon was a menace, he decided to play Philip as a draft. And at the end of the day, People were, the lame were healed. The people that were tormented of devils, demons cried with a loud voice. And before you know it, he had won. Hallelujah. God wants to use you to win in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
Oh, our time is flying. Okay, let's go to the book of Acts chapter 16. So in Acts chapter 8, the person that was established first was the person that represented the kingdom of darkness. And then the kingdom of light now produced someone to counteract his influence. In Acts chapter 16, the person that was established first was the person that represents the kingdom of light. And then after that person, the kingdom of darkness now presented their own candidate to undo the impact that the personnel from the kingdom of light had done in the land. It is only you that cannot see that this chess is going on. It's a game of territory. It's a game of influence. It's a game of dominion. And the two realms that are in the supernatural are playing that game with men. If you happen to be the, the, the instrument that the kingdom of light will wield on your path and in your ministry, you are going to come into head-on collision to many people that speak for darkness. You, oh my God. We went for a crusade in one of the villages in Benue State. And when we came, we came by four o'clock because the meeting was supposed to be by five and there was nobody on the crusade ground. The publicity was widespread. No one came. So we now went to ask, what is going on? They said, no, 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 they are farmers. They are on their farm. Your poster cannot change their, their farming lifestyle. They will go to farm first. They will come back and pound, pound the yam. Even if you pray in tongues, they will still pound, pound the yam and eat first and sleep. It's when they wake up, if you are still there, still doing something, then they will now come and find out what you are doing. So even though it was 4 o'clock on our poster, Hallelujah. They will begin to come by nine. We had come by four o'clock. We are too early. Spoke in tongues, spoke in tongues. I would say, ah, is there nobody at home? They said, the only person that you will find at home, either little children or the Ezemo of the village. So I said, let's visit the Ezemo now. He's not. Hey, let's pay him a visit. Meanwhile, it was by instruction. Please, oh. Help me tell, God, tell them, tell them that it was by what? If you go to Enugu Ezeke, your 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 village, and you decide to to, to visit the shrine, your story will be told on the newspaper and on Facebook. So it was by instruction. So we came to the door of the shrine, and the that's like ten years ago. I was thirty-six years then. But the Ezemo was a hundred years old. He had a lot of experience on the matter of altars, and he was the one that poured blood on the twenty-two altars of the people of the shrine. And the, each altar was representative of one of their gods. They had twenty-two gods. He had sacrificed to all of them and they had accepted the sacrifice. And he began to sing a song that was not in the music books. A string song. Oh! He was in high spirit when we came. <laughs> because the spirits he was serving had accepted his oblation. And when he saw us, he said, who are you? He said, we come in peace. Then he noticed that the spirits that were dancing with him all left him. Why are you here? Well, I said, if you point us without your finger again, we'll curse it. So he looked for a way to bring it down. Then the Holy, I was asking the Holy Ghost, give me something about this man. Give me something about him. Then he answered, yes, he has a, a, a chest pain that is 13 years old. So I say, ah, Oga, all these 22 altars you are servicing, they have not been able to take care of your 13 years old chest pain. Hey. The man gave me seat. Say, say. Say, sit down. Say, sit down. 
sit down there. So I sat down, my interpreter sat down behind me because my, my interpreter doesn't want to be in the forefront of the of the action. Sat at the back. So when I talk in English, the interpreter will pick it up in the local language. On a normal on a normal day, that guy through the influence of the spirits that he carries can tell you things about yourself. Because the spirits were no longer there, couldn't see, couldn't hear. Ah, but my own was working. Thirty minutes into the combat, eight other men, old men. 90 something years 90 something years old with stick walking stick they came to meet us in the shrine because he has sent for them after one hour of preaching and, and the healing as I was preaching the healing power of God was working on them by the time I finished they were all willing to give their life to Christ they all knelt down I insisted that they should kneel down As I led them to Christ. And I led them to renounce the altars. So the, the villager will mention one of the name of the spirit. I was, oh yeah, you people will renounce this one. Renounce that one. Renounce 22 altars. By the time I finished, it was 9 o'clock. The people, praise and worship has started. The people have eaten their pandediam. And they had come to check us. They will stand afar and do like this. And look. Because most of them are possessed. So they want to be sure that there's no wep weapon, no spiritual weapon in the crusade that will dispossess them of the charms that they carried. But the song was sweet. Ah! It was entry. Before they knew, they were on the, they were dancing. <laughs> and as they were dancing, some people that the witches have tied the witches did not know that we had shut down their mast. So some people that were tied in the coven and were crippled. Three of them, three crippled people rose up without prayer. They, they rose up. They just rose up some, through their crutches. It, nobody preached. It was during praise and worship. They just began to walk. And notice that. Huh? One had to test like this. The legs became functional. Three people walked without an evangelist. Three people walked without prayer. So the witches now realized that ah, these are people that we tied up. And it came to their awareness. Because no, the song was sweet. So they didn't know. It came to their awareness that something has tampered with the mast. So about 12 witches in that crusade ground ran away from the crusade ground. So we now left our Bible on the pulpit and pursued them. We went and did deliverance till 12, 12 midnight. Came back to the crusade ground. The people didn't go. You know why they leave quickly in your meeting? The reason why they leave, not is happening. <laughs> Twelve midnight, we came back. These people had vomited things. Charms had been destroyed, burnt off. Came back to the crusade ground. The people were still there. We led a village to Christ. That's the greatest honor I've had in the enterprise of the gospel till today. An entire village surrendered. We changed their God in one day. Tonight, Satan will surrender. I said, Satan will surrender. I said, Satan will surrender. In Acts chapter 16, verse 14, you will see that God raised an, a financial giant that was sponsoring the work of God. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, 
of the city of Thyatira, which worship God, had us, whose heart the Lord opened, and she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. The moment she gave her life to Christ, she became a financial pillar. She took on the body of expenditures from the ministry of Paul, brought them in. That was when they began to eat salad. They began to eat big fish. There were simple missionaries that were surviving on Gary. This woman now came and said, no, 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 come in. And they entered into another level of breakthrough. Are you seeing that? In the book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 16, which is the next verse. And it came to pass when we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed. She brought what? Her masters what? Now she was operating with the spirit of divination and it was still producing finances. Oh, you're not here. God raised a financial pillar in the territory. And what the devil did was that he raised someone that has the spirit of divination also to bring finances. So you see, it's a chess, chess game. Who will control the realm? That's the question. Who will control the city? That's the question. Who will control the nation? That is the question. Who will control your family? That's the question. As long as there is no man to do exploit, then the people will remain under the influence of the power of darkness. It will surprise you to know that this lady this chess lady that the devil played was not afraid of prayer meetings. The meeting she came for was prayer meeting. When we went for prayer, did they not say that witches are afraid of prayer meetings? That when we pray, witches are afraid. This type, they run to prayer meetings. The moment she came for prayer, the first thing she did was that she prophesied to Paul. And initially when she prophesied to Paul, Paul did not know that it was the spirit of the nation that was speaking. Are you with me? Why was it Paul she prophesied to? Was it only Paul that was part of the prayer meeting? She was hoping to deceive the leader of the group. And the moment she deceives the leader of the group, they will now make her prayer leader. And there are many churches in Kano that have been bedeviled by such people that have not been checked because the discernment level is small. Churches can be bewitched. Indeed, churches are bewitched. There is a strength that will come upon you tonight. The Lord will give you strength tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. unchecked. Do you know that Simon the sorcerer, when he came and submitted to Philip's ministry, Philip baptized him. Philip did not know that he was not born again. Simon the sorcerer wore white garment like the other people that were coming for baptism. Say, we are carriers of the cross. We are carriers of... Simon was there. And Philip did not discern that the guy was not born again. Until Peter came from Jerusalem. When Peter came for Jerusalem, and unfortunately for Simon, the apostolic office is rich in the gift of the discernment. He looked at Simon and said, you know, you don't have a part in this matter. Imagine that Peter did not come. Simon would have become the assistant pastor. And the entire thing that, that, that Philip was doing will be used to adorn the kingdom of darkness. Because the game is the game of chess. It's territory. It's territory.
So do you know for how long our nation has been held under manipulation? When we are about to break forth and we believe we have reached there, then they check, they do move. But we are coming out of that darkness. Suddenly when elections want to take place, then bloodshed becomes intensified. All kinds of altars are activated. It is to administer control. You will begin to see Christians arguing against themselves. They have different political positions. This is this. And everybody is trying to talk. Meanwhile, it's a sign of manipulation. Our numbers count for nothing. We cannot agree on this on one matter. One matter. This one we we'll see. Say, those days, they, we are all victims of manipulation. But I want you to know that this is a time. God had ordained that in this time we'll be set at liberty. The, the greatest thing you can begin to do after this meeting is to pick up your life for prayer. That's the greatest thing. Men that pray cannot be manipulated. If you stay in prayer, one day you will pray and sleep and your eyes will open, you will see what Satan does not want you to see. You will see it. You will see it. Who would have known that Ojeni, Ojeni, The hand of God will come upon you tonight in the name of Jesus. He wants to take over your family entirely. He wants to send your husband on the streets so that his eyes will be in Sabongiri. And he will not he will forget that before he married you, he had to lie down, he had to do a ballet. You know, those of us that married from Yoruba land, when we came, we told them that we are from the from a royal line, we don't kneel down. They say, Okay, we have heard, we have heard. <coughs> oh. <laughs> when we got there, they say they have an ancient culture, <laughs> and the culture requires that you what? I say, We are from. All of those matters were not, they, no, no, they, they, they were trivialized. We had to work. And in fact, it was on the grass that we went down. And then they now started speaking Yoruba, speaking Yoruba, so we're there for long. Hallelujah. Amen. We're there for long. But at the end of the day, we got the best woman that Nigeria could give. The best. <laughs> when you see me preach, you will know I'm a happy man. It's because. <laughs> hey. Do you know that from our wedding day, some people had looked at us? and despised us and they felt that the only thing that was good for us was death 14 days after our wedding they sent a coffin oh you were dancing to the altar like <coughs> oh Jenny will look at you and say Hayako Minasa <laughs> My ordination was 14 days after my wedding. So I went to the bathroom to take my bath. That was when the coffin came. And my wife was lying on the bed. And they called her name. Her spirit sat up. Walked out of her body. And was going towards the coffin. Are you there? You know what helped us? We did not just come for the ordination. We came for the conference leading to the ordination. A certain minister of the gospel, you know him, but I will not mention his name. He administered on Friday night. Our ordination was Saturday morning. Okay? The moment he came to the pulpit, he said, there are 38 coffins that he can see. 
the first person that fell down was my wife. I said, hey. Then he prayed for my wife. We went home. The next morning, they still sent the coffin while I was taking my bath. So when she was about to touch the coffin, that's when I opened the door and came out. Then her spirit went back. And then she shouted from the bed. I said, hey! What's that? She said, Ah, a coffin came. I said, Gee, coffin? So while we were marching with white suit at home, you need to see my white suit. I imported it. I was shining like this. But you see, some people that watch us march with joy, huh? what they felt we were deserving of was death, was mourning, was sorrow. The people that don't know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do as well. Let us pray. Yeah, where's that my brother that sings? Oh, you're here. That's your house song you sang, eh? Sing it four times. Why are giving back up? As he's singing, eh? Don't sing with him. Begin to pray about your family. Begin to pray about Canada. Begin to pray about Nigeria. And ask God to break the yoke. Break the yoke. Break the yoke.
Rabalatwa, Asaya Pala Kobe. Suvelan Kompesi, Pabonte Ede Makato Sobakadi. Yeso Sakudi Abendolo. Bongo do oskete boko samakaya. Abando no bo seketa menante. Oh, 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 oh. you can by so doing this environment will be saturated and the angels of heaven will descend here in the name of Jesus at the same time. There's a lady and she has been carrying a chain about. A chain. Sometimes the chain weighs heavy upon her left leg. You have been carrying a chain. In the next 17 seconds that chain will break. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Anywhere that lady is carrying the chain, let the chain break, let it break, let it break, let it break, let it break. Break! Also, oh, it will help me because everybody must be delivered tonight. Some outside there. Bring them. We are going to conduct mass deliverance. And at once, demons will leave everyone. That that oh my god, oh my god. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me. The witchcraft 
that was used to bind someone here is tied to the ritual that was done with your umbilical cord. Now, that one, that a ritual was done with his or her umbilical cord in this place, under the sound of my voice, I command that the yoke to break in the name of Jesus Christ. I said, break in the name of Jesus. Break in the name of Jesus. Break in the name of Jesus. Also, look for them. Look for them. Look for them. That transaction will be destroyed this evening in the name of Jesus Christ. has been following and the reason why a demon is following you is because sometime when you were much younger you had an affliction and you were taken to a native doctor I see a serpent following you part of the items that were used to effect the cure had to do with the hide of the serpent father anywhere that one that we see the mark of the serpent is standing or sitting on this ground. I ask tonight, locate that one. 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 In the name of Jesus. your family right now right now right now right now because tonight 
is that night of destiny that God has ordained to bring the turn around. The spell must break. The manipulation must break. The witchcraft must be destroyed. Judgment must manifest even tonight in the name of Jesus. in the river father from my left hand side to my right hand side to the open field that one whose bondage is tied to the spirits of the river locate that one 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 let the youth break now Because we come in the name of Jesus Christ. That yoke you placed upon the young lady. Tonight we say the end has come. Let your power break. Yes. Yes. Now listen to me, listen to me. We want to begin the miracle service now. If you have an eye condition, remove your spectacles and lay your hands on your eyes. These instructions also apply to people that are participating online. Listen. If you have someone sick and the person is not here, you can take your phone, call the person, leave the phone running while I pray the miracle prayer. It doesn't matter where on earth the person is, in Lusaka, in Lagos, and in Los Angeles. The hand of God will come upon that person anywhere the person is. As long as there's network, we will receive healings from all over the place. So the person cannot come here, but the person is sick. Place a call now. Nah. If you have a hearing problem, take your finger, block the ear that cannot hear completely, and wait for further instructions. If you have a growth, cancer, a fibroid, tumors. Put your hand where the growth is. Your genotype is SS, sickle cell. Lay your hands on your head. You are crippled and you use crutches. Lay your hands on your legs. If your hand is, the, is what is paralyzed, ask somebody to lay your, his hand 
on your hand. You brought somebody that is mad, mentally retarded. Put your hand on the person's head. As we cry, I will give a command, and the angels will begin to walk in this place. Even those of you that can hear me across the streets, under the sound of my voice, the healing power of God will come into your bedroom tonight. Make the call quickly if you are making the call. Because the prayer will be very short but very powerful. Very short. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, tonight I bind every sickness. I bind every disease. I bind every pain. I bind every blinding spirit. I bind every deafening spirit. I bind every spirit of paralysis. I break your hold in the name of Jesus. Deafening spirits be bound in the name of Jesus. Blinding spirits be bound in the name of Jesus. I arrest every blood pressure, intensity of blood in the heart of anyone that is present here or listening to us, either by social media or by phone. I say let the yoke be broken right now in the name of Jesus. Let the pain go in the name of Jesus. I command the bones to come together. Bone to bone. Bone to bone. Bone to bone. In the name of Jesus. I command the cancer to die. I command the tumor to dry up. Fibroid, dry up in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I say, I see in Jesus' name. I say, here, here in Jesus' name. I command anyone that is crippled on this ground. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Cancer die in Jesus' name. Oh. 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 The miracle walking power of God has begun to walk. I command that here, here in the name of Jesus. Rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. Someone with a, a, a long condition, a long condition. You were asthmatic, you use an inhaler, but the Lord is, you begin to feel a pain on your lungs. You are feeling a pain on your lungs. That pain is not sickness, it's healing. It's healing. Yes, your lungs are beginning to open. Yeah, it's beginning to open right now. The hand of God is, is effecting a cure. It's effecting a cure on your lungs. 
yes there is a release there is a release i break that yoke on the lungs in the name of jesus christ oh my god i speak to those ones connecting by the phone you are bedridden you are paralyzed you have been kept under the bondage of witchcraft i command you right now rise and be healed in the name of jesus rise and be healed in the name of jesus the miracles are flowing everywhere we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor in the name of Jesus listen check your body, check your eyes check your ears check them now you have two minutes to check them for those of you that made calls call the people again and ask them of their condition there is someone that had a pain under the abdomen it's as if you would die and that pain has been healed just check for it check for it check for it two people I can see two people their eyes have been corrected two, two eyes are being corrected even now someone with pain on the spinal cord that came as a result of an accident. The pain just left. Check it now. Those of you that have confirmed your healing, you will come this way. If you have checked yourself, you confirm the healing, go that way. I will take a few testimonies before I release one prayer. I will release a prayer into your family. I will release a prayer into the city of Kano. Then we will release a prayer into our dear nation, Nigeria. If you have confirmed the miracle and you are outside or inside, you come this way. If you have confirmed the miracle, outside or inside, make your way to the right side of the podium. A pastor will be stationed to hear your miracle while we wait for the miracle people to come out we want to do final damage to the investments of satan in terms of uh, deliverance right now um pastor Tina, come down here come no go 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 if you have confirmed the miracle go this way support me let me come down i need to cast out the spirit okay uh, oh 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 wait for me i'm ushers can you shake me shake me shake me hand and place it on the person that you are monitoring. Place that hand on the person you are monitoring. Male for male, female for female. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command the power of that demon. Break. 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 Let them go. Let them go. Come out of the bodies. Catch that girl. Catch that girl. Come out of your bodies in the name of Jesus. Come out of your bodies in the name of Jesus. Ah. Okay, okay, wait. Sister. See the demon, see the demon, see the demon. See the, de yeah. Uh huh. Come out! Now, let me. Okay. Through the mouth, come out! Come out! Uh, 
She wants to like me now. Eh? <laughs> right now, Lord, we give you praise, we give you glory because of your excellent majesty. Tonight, we discomfit the power of this serpent from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. From the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Now, let fire begin to burn. Let fire begin to burn from the crown of the head to the soles of the feet. Let fire, 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 let fire. Lose her. Every legal union in the spirits. I destroy every ring that binds you with a foul spirit in the spirit realm. I destroy that union now in the name of Jesus. Now, so it's, it's tied to an umbilical cord. Look for the umbilical cord. Yeah. 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 She's coming out now. She's coming out. She's coming out. She's coming out. She's coming out. Yeah. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. No. I'm not talking to you. Oh my God. Uh, Pastor T, go up and carry me. Yes. Yes. You got it. You got it. She's coming out. Just be patient. She's coming out. the man there. Come up. Call them one by one. Oh! 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 Sorry, the, the goddess of the river cannot help you here because we come in the name of Jesus Christ. And that spell that was placed over your life with discomfited, with discomfited, we destroy it in the name of Jesus. We release judgment into that river, fire into that river to destroy that kingdom that has held you captive. And we do this in the name of Jesus. If I say in the name of Jesus, say amen. In the name of Jesus. Aha. Aha. Ah. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me. I want to give you some wisdom. Are you with me? There is a woman here. Huh? Who is that? Hey! Let me see him. Let me see him. Look at me! Today is Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night. There will be an attack on your small daughter. Satan will attempt to take your small daughter. It will be programmed for 9 p.m. By 7 p.m. Are you with me? Because she has had those attacks before in the night. And all the time it comes is in the night. By 7 p.m. Lay hands on her and, and say, you shall not die. That's the instruction. When the spirit of death comes, it will hover, but it will not be able to land. It will hover three times and it will be compelled to go back. 
We are at war tonight. Oh. Oh. In the name of Jesus. Yes. All right, please, so we... please, you may be seated. Give me another 30 minutes to clean up. I need to clean up. Those of you on the line, just be patient. Some things will run out this night. Okay, yes. She has been having serious headache for three years now. And then at the instant of the prayer, she was For delivered. three years, she has been having headaches. Then in addition, she put a phone call to her mother. Put a phone call to her mother. High blood pressure. High blood pressure. Uh, where's your mother? She's at home. She's in Kano. She's at home in Kano here. So what happened to your mother? She has BP. So did she feel any difference? She she's, okay. she's, she's calm. Okay. Lord, we ask that you make this miracle permanent. Permanent in Jesus' name. Yes? So Quickly. This lady here has been having serious back pain for many years. She could not remember. Serious back pain. But as the prayer was ongoing, she was liberated. She was even stretching herself and discovered okay, that the pain is was nowhere Go. to be found. It's permanent. Amen. Okay, she said she couldn't see correctly. She couldn't see. Who is the who is with this one? Who is with this young lady here to confirm what she's saying? Are you the one? Now, please put her on the screen if there's a screen outside. If you are with this young lady with red shirt, please come. Come. Your mother. Your mother? My brother. Your brother is outside. Uh, call your brother's name. Brother Stephen. Brother Stephen, come. Your sister is with me. Come up, come up stage here. So you, are you ready? Look at me, look at me. Are you ready to part with the goddess of the water? You, look at me. Are you ready? If you are not ready, we'll leave you. Eh? But are you ready? You want to part with her? Because you are still holding her. Look at me. I'm talking to you. Are, are you ready? You are not. Okay. Yeah, Brother Stephen. Um, are you aware of her high eye problem? Yes, I'm aware, sir. Can you describe the condition? Um, she often complained that um, she doesn't see clearly sometimes. She doesn't see clearly? Yes, sometimes. Okay, so uh, what's your name? Rachel. Rachel. You couldn't see clearly before? Sometimes. So, um, what do you mean by you couldn't see clearly? Like during school. Oh, during school, you cannot see clearly. Yes. So what happened to you? As I received the prayer, now I feel healed. You feel healed? Can you see clearly now? Yes, sir. Somebody needs to shout hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus. Ah. Perfect her sight. And let it be permanent. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Stephen, you can go with your sister. Yes, what happened to Sir, you? Sir, this sister okay. has been having leg pain on her right foot. Leg pain? Since 2016. And she said when the pain comes, it also comes with an abdominal pain. It comes with an but abdominal at pain. at the instance of the prayer, it has disappeared. You can't feel the pain anymore. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. And we say this is permanent in the name of Jesus. Yes, you are blessed. Touch her, touch her, if she's ready. Are you ready to divorce from the goddess of the river you are not sure you are sure okay come bring her and come with her you are ready no not like this now come can, can you fly I'm interested in that deliverance I saw the spirit coming from the water to challenge me 
So we, if this fight, if this battle doesn't end, we can't end this meeting. Huh? Hey, see you, see you. Touch them. I, oh, that is not where I say you should follow. I say follow this way. You don't, you don't know that if you follow the instruction, you are protected. You are just. <laughs> What happened to her? She said she couldn't hear well. For her. She couldn't hear for how many years? I don't, I don't remember. She, she doesn't remember for how long. So what happened to you? Did you feel anything when we prayed? Yes. Tell us your experience. I feel in my ear. She's not sure. Leave her. I can She's... hear. You can hear clearly now. Mm. Each of the ears. Wait. All don't the... answer your question. Answer my own. I said, when we were praying, did you feel anything on your body? Yes. How did you feel? I feel healed. Something in your ear. So and then when we finished praying, you tested the ear, and you can hear very well now. Now, can we celebrate Jesus? Yeah, it's true. You can go. Can you stretch your hand? Let us bring this lady out from the river. Now, you, you, just, hey, hey, hey. Shake me. You know I don't have time. I don't have time. Huh? All right, so if you are ready, follow my instruction. I say shake me. That's number one. Then number two. Say Jesus. Follow my instruction. Say Jesus. Try. That is, that's the fastest means of transportation. Huh? What's going on? Yes, what's happened there? This brother had an accident last week. He had an accident last week. And he has been having an excruciating pain. Ah, wait, wait, wait. There's another one to come, come. Stand up. Bring her. She's in the water too. Let's transport her out. She needs transport money to come out of there, of the water. Yes, you had an accident on your leg. Affected so four days ago, the leg started swollen up again for the second time. For the second time, yes, and I was feeling some pain. So, you were feeling pain, yes, but while you were praying, I what just, happened? I just felt something and I was twisting my leg. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! Now, listen, I see two phone call miracles, I see two phone call miracles yeah let me is there anyone there oh oh they are there okay lord we decree that this healing is permanent in the name of jesus go it's permanent okay shake me shake me are you ready to come out you are ready do you know that your umbilical cord was used to, to put you in bondage? Are you aware of that? You know? Okay. Don't worry. Uh, yes, that's where it is. It was your umbilical cord when you were born. Uh -huh. Okay. Now say, just say, Jesus. Jesus. Have mercy on me. Okay. Sir, this brother here said. That's, that's an easier way. This one is. There are many ways, but this one is easier. So that you will not be, be stressed up. Amen. Sorry. Receive grace to, to do it. <laughs> what happened to him then? He said he, his mother has not been seen clearly for over eight years. For over eight years, his mother has not been seen clearly. Where is your mother? In Lafia, sir. Lafia. How many of you know Lafia? In Nassau State. How much did they transport money from Kano to Lafia? 6,500. Now, the miracle was transported to Lafia without transport. 
So what happened to your mother? I, I called her to listen to the prayer while it's going on. Huh? Okay, this lady is asking why she's here. You know, after the transportation, she didn't know that there was... There was you are here for good reasons, huh? Oh, she's asking why she's here too. Oh, you want to drink water? Give, please give them water. They are here for good... They are here for a good reason. Oh, you want to marry? Okay, Father, in the name of Jesus, let the gate of our marriage that have been shut, let it open tonight in the name of Jesus. She wants all her problems solved now. <laughs> so what happened to your mother? So I called her while you are leading the prayer, and I told her to pay attention to what is going on, and she should have it. So after the prayer, I told her she should do what she couldn't do before, which she did. She said she is feeling fine. I said, it's not a matter of feeling fine. I want you to confirm to me exactly what you are feeling right now. And she said, glory to God, she can do what she cannot do before. Now, that was she an eye read. condition. An eye condition. How yes, did sir. she test herself? No, I, I don't know. What I know, she called the call, and I believe she uses her phone to check without the oh, glasses. She, she used her phone to check her... She used her eyes without glasses to check her phone and she could use her all the way to Lafia. Lord, we use him as a point of contact to reach his mother. We say, let the miracle be permanent in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, it is true. Go, it's permanent. Okay, bring her, bring her, bring her. In Bini language, that they will kill me, but I'm still I'm still here. Okay. <laughs> the the spirit couldn't even... has been having ulcer and high blood pressure. Ulcer. Where's your mother? At brigade. Yes. She's at brigade. Brigade. Yes, sir. Where's brigade? Come here. I forgot him, Brigade. Eh? Wait. So, what did your mother say? When I call her, she, I call her while the prayer is going on. I call her. I say she should listen to the prayer. While she was listening to the prayer, she screamed, Jesus. She, she fell on the ground. She fell on the ground in, yes. in Brigade. Yes, sir. From, from, Later on, I call her. From phone. Yes, sir. I call her and I say, well, how, she is, how she is feeling? She says she's feeling okay. Nothing. I say, are you sure you are okay? She says she's okay. <laughs> Somebody needs to shout at it. <laughs> we have miracles online. Even some people in Ghana are getting healed. Um, we cannot. Oh, my God. Where is that person that had a... a healing on the eye that I asked to come out. Okay. You people. So why were you sitting down? You were checking. And you are checking it. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Project some online miracles on the screen so that we can verify them. Yeah, go on with the next person. There's a woman I'm seeing. The Lord wants to now give me that woman yeah come the Lord wants to put an anointing on your life you have been faithful you have been faithful you have been faithful so an oil will come what what you see me doing you, you will do it And so we call upon your name concerning your daughter. That this oil of authority, this anointing of authority might descend upon her life, might descend upon her ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ, that her avocat cord will carry power. Okay, yes. Sir. She said her son. Her son has not been able to make any sound. He couldn't make any sound. For I born him this way. He has been talking for from one year to three years.
prophecies for when he completed three years, he stopped talking at all. Oh, you want us to pray for him? No, after the prayer, he started making sound. After the prayer, he started making sound. Now, somebody help me hold this microphone. Let me carry this ball. Can you stretch your hand in his direction? That spirit of dumbness. That spirit of dumbness has been disgraced. It's been destroyed. Let the hand of God descend stronger upon him in the name of Jesus. Oh. Lord, let this one preach your gospel. Let him preach your message. Let him be your messenger. In the name of Jesus Christ. control him. I can't control him. How are you? <laughs> Lord, <laughs> we give you glory and praise for losing his tongue. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone that attacked the family that wanted to give the mother sorrow and the father sorrow, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you stretch forth your hand and administer your judgment on that one in the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, she, she said there's a, when you were ministering that she has a woman her underwears were taken somewhere and then a part of her body was smelling. So, but yes, now. Prayer. Didn't you hear what I said? They took her clothes. And a demon of reproach was released. If I didn't see it, I will not say it. When, if you do like that, it's thinking. Aha, uh -huh. okay, now. You know what? Oh my God. Stretch forth your hand in our direction. We want to break that yoke now. Don't, don't weep. Don't weep. It's okay. And let me finish with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, this spell that was done upon her right now, it breaks. It breaks. It breaks. It breaks. Let the smell of, re of reproach be broken and let the smell of blessing replace it now sir she said this she came here with this boy with high fever today okay he had high fever but at the instance of the prayer she said it has okay the fever time. broke yes sir. somebody shout hallelujah Grace. Yeah, so I give you what I have from the Lord. What I have from the Lord. Oh, okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, you still have people there? Yes, sir. Oh, 
Where are those ones that had eye problems? Come, all of you come. Come up, come up. The Sorry. ones with eye problems that refuse to come up until I call them. Oh, online. Haruna from Ghana. I couldn't see clearly, but I can see very well now. I fell under the anointing and felt something coming out of my mouth. Now, that went to Ghana to, to bring deliverance. Yes, those of you with eye issues that say you were checking it to confirm. Jesus sent me to you people. One of you will receive an anointing. I advise that one of the ushers should collect that baby from her. So the Lord said, the only way I will identify you is that he will heal your eyes. And among those whose eyes he heals, he will anoint them. Now let us confirm from one of you, yeah? So what happened to your eyes? It, uh, since I was born, I had this problem of my eyes problem. And up to now, the thing is still disturbing me. But after this prayer... I felt like I was my the left, the right hand. Okay, don't worry, don't worry. Okay, just be calm, okay? Calm down. You talk too much. Have you heard that the Bible says that it is not by much speaking that our prayers are heard? Have you heard that one? Okay. Now, so one of you, the Lord healed you as a sign so that um, we can identify the individual that God is going to anoint. So there's an anointing coming on one of you. Expect it. It's coming. The anointing will come on one of you. It will come so strong. It will come so powerfully. God wants to use that verse. He said he will heal the eyes first. Then he will anoint Oh. Oh. He said he will heal the eyes first. Then he will pour out an anointing. He will heal the eyes first. Then he will pour out an anointing. He will heal the eyes first. Then he will pour out an anointing. So he's pouring out now. He's pouring out. He's pouring out. He's pouring out. He's pouring out. He's pouring out an anointing. It's pouring out an anointing. There's an anointing that is being released. There's an anointing that is coming out. There's an anointing that is coming out. It is pouring out. It's 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 pouring out. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. All right, I think I need to release blessing now so that I can go away. But if you are here tonight and you have not yet said yes to Jesus, this is your time. Anywhere you are, inside, outside, and you want to turn your heart over to him, rise up on your feet. Now. Jesus said, if you deny me in this broken world, I will deny you in the kingdom of my father. Rise up on your feet, inside and outside. Release these ones from here. Release them. Sorry, we cannot take your testimony. Copper, what happened to you? Copper. Your father, what happened to him? He has a broken leg. You put a call through to him. Okay, tell us your testimony. Where is your father? He's in Lagos State. What happened to him? He, he joined the, the armed force and then during their training, he broke his leg and since then he has stopped doing that. So when I put a call to him and, we, and you prayed, he said he's okay. Can you walk? Yes, sir. 
Someone in Lagos, cripple. He can walk. Now, we cannot take your testimony, but I can give you something. Father, release your anointing. Release it strong. Okay, it's coming already. Release it. 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 On them. Release it on them. Let it come stronger. Let it come stronger. Oh, oh my God. It's even coming stronger. It's even coming stronger. It's even coming stronger. Release the anointing. Release the anointing. Release it stronger. Stronger. Holy Ghost. Those of you that are standing to receive Jesus, come. Come to me here. I need to introduce you to Jesus. If you are standing on your feet so that you can receive Jesus, come here. Come here. From outside, I'm waiting for you. From inside, I'm waiting for you. The Lord Jesus is calling you because he wants to use you as his instrument, as his vessel. Do not be ashamed of him. see some angels just came now I was waiting for them for a long time oh my god oh my god oh my god I am waiting for you I name I'm waiting for you to come. The Son of Man calls you because he wants to set your soul at liberty. decision of your life because this is the part to your transformation why are all the ushers blocking my space now ushers go out go out those of you can go out they need you outside ushers ah. hey. so that my guests can come in but, okay, bring that lady up. If the lady is not delivered, bring her up. Bring her up so that you will create space because I know you are not planning to move. Oh. Give them space. Hey. Jesus Christ. Uh, Sati, please, go there. Go there. I don't know this. Allow my guests to come in. I am still waiting for you. out here, repeat after me, say, Lord Jesus, 
listen to me it doesn't matter whether you are a church goer or a Muslim you can turn your heart to Jesus and he will accept you say Lord Jesus I accept that I am a sinner now just in case some people don't understand English Pastor Ben take the mic and speak house uh, Solo you are more of a house man Menini Test the mic. Hallelujah. All right, let's start again. Say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, the Derana, I accept Nashiria that I'm a sinner. And I cannot help myself. Have mercy on me. Wash me in your blood. Write my name. In the book of life. Give me the power. To live for you. All the days. Of my life. Every covenant. Every covenant I entered into. Knowingly. Or unknowingly. Let this power. Let his power over my soul Akara, you water. be destroyed. Yerushi. Give me grace Bani Ikonka. to stand for you in Sayamaka. all the days Dukra, of my you, life. Dukra, you water. In Jesus' mighty name. Yesu. Yeah, where's the counselor? Now, there are some people raising their hands. Just go with them. They'll take your name, take your address because we want to meet with you after now. Just go that way. Can you salute them as they make their pass? This way. This way. This way. This way. So let her go. Let her go. And in a Monday, he got my tagoma. Oh my God. So now, such as I have, I want to give you. something so I will go around every row and give them if your heart is open you can receive but please receive you know why if I, if I don't give it out I can't sleep I'll be on the bed and I want to sleep this night please so receive please huh? alright come come your heart is open come father in the name of Jesus Release this oil on your servant. is coming on you is the anointing for wisdom this robe father anyone whose heart is open put it on them don't worry it's coming you don't even need to say amen it's coming it's coming it's coming it's coming it's coming stronger 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 
It's not, oh my God, there's an intensity. Ah, it's coming even stronger, yet stronger. Now, what is coming on you is the presence of God. You will carry it from place to place. And anywhere there is bondage, when you come there, the things will break. It's coming on you, it's coming on you. It's coming stronger. It's coming stronger. It's coming stronger. It's coming stronger. Yeah, it's coming. Oh my, it's coming now. It's coming strong. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Those of you in the choir, you have blessed me. You have blessed me. So I want to bless you back so that your ministry will be, will be heightened. Your rank in the spirit. Lord, Lord, look upon them. Look upon these ministers. And let an anointing that will boost their ministry come upon them. Let it come so strong. Let it come so strong. Let it come so strong. Okay, it's already coming. 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 Holy Ghost. 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 Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, anoint anyone whose heart is open. Anoint everyone whose heart is open. Let the grace begin to descend. Let the grace begin to come. Let it begin to come with intensity. Let it begin to come with intensity. Let it begin to come in the name of Jesus. Let it begin to come in the name of Jesus. something for you I have something for you I have something for you there's an anointing that will come upon you yes it will rest upon you it will rest upon all of you all of you that are outside I'm not going row by row it will be everywhere 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 it's already coming 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 holy ghost 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 I never more he can more. As on a he caboria la la mona. As on a naira he can more. As on a na na
From Benue State, they got it from Kano here. Huh? You know Sona? Uh huh. So it, we, we bought it. And uh, you know it is closed. Huh? It's sealed. Sorry. Oh. Okay. Now I just want you to bear witness that it's sealed. Huh? Okay, open now. There are some people I'm looking for. And I have a word of wisdom on how to find them. That touches those people, then I will find them. What is that? Let me use how will I go? He said, Take water. Anybody it touches for me to move back. Some people block the road, so the ceremony ended there. I was willing, but no road. Where's your wife? Come, sister. From this night, you will see. Greater authority in the apostolic. So I provoke into active expression such powers and graces associated with the apostolic calling, the discernment quotient. 
revelatory access capacities in 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 impressions in perceptions in visibilities in visions and encounters let there be a multiplication of the power gifts the healing anointing oh i put on you let the prophetic grace i see the horns of the prophet let it come let it speak let it speak in your vessel let it speak let it speak grace Grace, 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 in the name of Jesus. So rise into rank, rise into authority, rise into grace. The Lord enlarge your coast as you be a witness of his resurrection. Let it be confirmed with signs, with wonders, with miracles and mighty deeds. Man, let the forces in the underworld recognize your authority. Even those that are dead, that are dead and drifted into Hades. May your voice be licensed enough, reason enough for them to be recalled. If it is not the appointed time for judgment. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be bold and of good courage. As you bear witness in these last days, the Lord will increase your greatness and he will comfort you on every side. In Jesus' name. celebrate Jesus let no man glory in your in your presence all the glory is yours all the glory is yours all the glory is yours Yahweh all the glory is yours all the glory